In this video, we're going to solve some non-homogeneous recurrence relations that are relatively simple. So I received this question on Reddit through messages and I answered it and I figured that these are one of those types of questions that people generally forget how to do because there's a very simple way to do these ones. So I'm going to do two here. One of them is the exact question he asked and the other one is a question that I found that I like. So we want to solve a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus 7 n. This is for n greater or equal to 1, and our initial condition a0 is equal to 4. So what I want to do is I want to bring all of our a n's to one side. So here I have a n minus a n minus 1 is equal to 7 n. Okay, so here is what people generally forget. If we have a n minus a n minus 1 is equal to some function of n, then we have a very simple solution. We have that our recurrence relation a n is equal to a zero plus the sum from i equals one to n of f of i. So this is our function evaluated i from one to n. So how do we do this? Well, in this case, we have a n. What is a zero? So a zero is equal to four. So this is four plus and then we have the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of i. So what is our f of n? Well, our f of n is 7n, so our sum is going to be 7i. Okay, so we can simplify this a bit. This is 4, and because 7 is a constant term, we can factor the 7 out. This will be 7 times the sum from 1 to n of i. So what is the sum of i from i equals 1 to n? Well, you may remember this from calculus or your discrete math course. This is just n times n plus 1 over 2. So we can just substitute that in to our recurrence relation here. This will be 4 plus 7 times n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, now all that's left is to simplify it. This will be 4 plus 7n squared over 2 plus 7n over 2. So this is the solution to our recurrence relation. So you could do the other method of finding a n p plus a n h and doing all that nonsense. However, that is much, 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 much slower than remembering that a n minus a n minus 1 equal to some function on n has a simpler solution. So let's do another one. Let's do a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus n, n squared. Okay, so all to one side, a n minus a n minus 1 is equal to n squared. So here our f of n is equal to n squared. Okay, again we need to make sure that this is a n minus a n minus 1. Any constant here will make this not work. So if you have a constant there, this won't work. Okay, so our a n is going to be equal to a zero plus the sum from i equals one to n of f of i. So f of i is just going to be i squared and our a zero is going to be seven. Okay, so another sum we should probably know. The sum of i squared from i equals one to n is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Now if you're saying, how do you remember that? I have no idea. This is just one of those things that I've never forgotten, and I hardly ever use it either. But if you do this enough, you'll remember these. So while you're doing your practice problems, consult your textbook and try to remember these. Okay, so this is just going to be 7 plus well, we already know our sum here. This is going to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Uh, you could technically be done here, but for the sake of completion, let's multiply these out. This will be n squared plus n, and then we'll do some foiling or some distributing. So this will be 2n cubed plus 2n squared plus n squared, so this will become 3n squared, plus n, all over 6. 
So our final solution here is going to be n cubed over three plus n squared over two plus n over six plus seven. And of course, you can plug in some values of n to check to make sure if you're right. I did check these before and these solutions are correct. So there you go. There's some, homo uh, some non-homogeneous recurrence relations that people sometimes forget how to solve. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.